movement and action welcome to in the green room i'm kinga and i'm chet and this is martin and we have a great show in line for you today sam pillsbury welcome is welcome back in the studio studio yeah, that's right what is this my third time isn't it yeah oh, you've so. been, in, oh, maybe you've been so ubiquitous i think it's been a dozen <laughs> and then we also have a new guest in the green room why don't you introduce him <laughs> uh Introduce yourself, David. I am David War with Giving Tree Cafe here in Phoenix, Arizona. I think you need to get closer to the mic. You have to kind of yeah, like kiss to, the mic. Yeah, we need to make, talk loud. I am David War with Giving Tree Cafe, Thank Phoenix, you. Arizona. Honored to be here with you all. Thank you very much. Excellent. Excellent. You've got a radio voice. Very nice. I like that deep timber. And we are going to be talking sustainability, wine, love, saving the planet. All One the show at a time. time. That's Thank right. Thank you. So Sam, what's what's new? What's going on with you? Well, right now the two newest things are, first of all, we picked our first uh, grapes of the year on Friday. It's Monday today. That was a quite a long delay, but it's been, um, well, every 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 monsoon is different. And this year the monsoon is different because it rains almost every day. Which and is it, weird. Which is a little unusual and it's been going on for about a month. Well, that, that slows down the ripening of the grapes because right. the temperatures are lower and there's a lot of water around. So, so uh, we, I think we're, Fine. One of the worries mm -hmm. that exists in that situation is that eventually they're going to start to rot. Right. And um, you have to be super careful on this. Fortunately, there's all sorts of organic sprays that you can you can use to to to, to inhibit or slow that down. But in the end, it'll get you if it, if it just keeps happening. So, right. So right. it's a little bit anxious making, you know. So, but we're so far so good. We picked two tons of shard on. F last Friday morning at So and that was the first. That was the, that was the so, first so of this you year. Just started we just started harvest, which yeah. is usually you, you guys are around the first of August. Yeah. 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 Wow. This and is how delicious. Did the and how do the wow. how do those shard grapes look with um, all this rain and stuff? Well, they're pretty good. I'll tell you what happens. It's, it's quite interesting. Um they, they're fine. Uh engorgement is one thing that that slows down the uh increasing um sugar levels in the grapes, which is what you need to make wine because yeast yeast works on um, eat sugar to turn it into alcohol. Right. So that's one of the issues. But the other issue is we had a, a, a little spray of hail about 10 days ago. And if it and if a bird pecks a grape or the hail punctures the skin of it, it'll start to rot. Right. So some of the fruit doesn't look perfect, but it's only like about 2%. Okay. Um, so it's going to be fine. And we did we did have these organic sprays on there. So it's all under control. But, but you know, sooner or later, <clears throat> it'll get you if it keeps going like this. I mean, I had, I had to put all the guys in, pl in plastic bags one year about five years ago because it just didn't stop raining. I was going to pick their grapes in the rain. I don't care. You know? <laughs> when it has a, almost a flooding effect, what happens with the grapes? Cause well, they get then they get too much water, and that stops them from ripening, and it also mm. brings up the pH a little bit, which you don't want. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so you have every, to wait. every year is different. It's just mm -hmm. like, it's like dodging... Um, 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 Puffball, what do you call them? Dodgeball. You, dodge, do, you know, it's like dodging. <laughs> it's, it's like just every year you just got to negotiate what happened. Right, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the farm runs you, right? Well, you, well, <laughs> you have to embrace it. And um, it is funny because there's so many beliefs that making wine is kind of romantic and sexy and everything like that. And it you, is. You want to see me before I just got changed. You know, there's <laughs> wine stains don't come out easy either. So no, That's it's hard, wine it's, stains it's are hard work and it's dirty and it's exhausting. Well, yeah. I'd like some more of this dirty wine, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. This is the Chardonnay. Chardonnay. And you were saying and you we make wines a little bit eating. different than everybody else. Uh, David, you want to pass up some food? Sure. So uh, David prepared us some food. From his I want to give you a sample of a few of so the things. So the Giving like Tree yes. Cafe. Yes. Oh, wow. What you need. Ah, there we go. That's sexy oh. the way you open up the bottle. It's, it's the you health food method of putting it <laughs> <laughs> mm. The Giving Tree Cafe. Very so delicious. So you guys are mm. a uh, vegan, Martin's. vegetarian. We're 100% vegan, and we're also 100% organic. you got to get so up on the, the mic. mic. And, and so guess what? So are our wines. I right on the mic, we won't be able to hear you. Yeah. I love it that you're and talking louder about 100% organic, yeah. because that's what we're all about, we're, and that's what sustainability is all about. No, and, mm -hmm. we're, and we're vegan as well. So we actually, I've actually changed some of the nomenclature in our marketing to put the word vegan wine in there. For our so video, we're not going to be able to hear your voice. You have to talk, project your voice like <laughs> out loud. Like this. Yes. Yes. Everyone's like only going to hear me <laughs> and Sam. That, that'll be it. Me, Sam, Martin, and Chet, and you won't, no one will know you're there if you don't talk louder. So I'll do my best to tell you a little bit about Giving Tree Cafe. 100% organic, 100% vegan. Wow. Also 100% gluten-free and soy-free. 100% organic, gluten-free, 
and local. And where are you guys located at? And sustainable. 2024 North 7th Street. Oh, okay. okay. Right up the road. So we're just down the street from you all. So why don't you carry Sam's oh. wines? <laughs> That's why I brought you here, Steve, so I can put you on the spot. I want you to carry his we're, wines. We're, you know what? I, I, I don't want to be in the most expensive, fanciest restaurants in town. I want to be in the restaurants that... that that live and, and exist in a way that I approve of. So mm -hmm. I go out of my way to get involved with with people that do organic food and use local stuff and so on. Um, so David's going to have yeah. the wine. Sounds thing. like a great fit, then. Yeah. <laughs> <Sounds like laughs> great fit. That's awesome. It's really what we're all about. Uh, it's more important for us to be sustainable than it is to be vegan. But if you're sustainable, you're definitely going to be vegan because the factory farming surrounding dairy and meat is just doing the exact opposite. On the yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. We have Coronado Dairy down the road from us with, with pulling millions of, of gallons of water out of this out of this basin which does not have a river going into it every year and it's a disaster. Right. right. Sure. It's the same thing with factory farming. Just, yes. just, oh, we all know fifty pounds of corn to produce one pound of beef yeah. or that fifty pounds of corn can be you know feed a family of four for a yes, hundred years. Absolutely. So this is for Sam. What are we eating here? <laughs> looks like you've got some desserts here. Oh, wow. What, what is that? Got? That looks amazing. Jackfruit pancake. Wow. There you go. Blueberry <laughs> cheesecake, Martin. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, yummy. Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> chocolate hazelnut pie. Oh, there you go. Chet likes chocolate. Oh, man. There we go. <laughs> so good. So there's a couple of other things that are really important to us. Um, we do we do Thank you. farm in such a way that, for example, we don't um, furrow between the rows. Uh, we let grass grow and we mow it because if you disc between the rows, it turns into powder, it washes and blows away, it releases CO2. If you have wild grasses growing between the rows and you cut them with a, with a mower, it goes back into the soil and nurtures the, nurtures the soil, puts the puts the right nutrition into it. Mm -hmm. We don't spray for weeds. We have a machine that fits on the side of the tractor that's in, that costs ten thousand dollars. That has a has a, a a weeder that goes in between the vines as it goes down the rows. We, you know, we go to a, we go to a lot of trouble. I mean, mm -hmm. if you if you want to take care of weeds. Uh, unfortunately, there is no good uh, organic weed spray, so you have to have a machine do it. Right, know? right. I mean, that the makes best sense. thing on earth for weeding is Roundup, and we won't use that. You know? Oh, God, no. I mean, it's amazing. It's cheap, and it mm -hmm. works perfectly, but can't do that. So. Right, right, right. So we do <clears throat> things that's way more expensive. <laughs> and that's why this is the best wine, because it is organic, and he does not use those mm -hmm. pesticides. And he doesn't that's use a really Roundup. relevant Thank topic, you. because that study just came out that was showing that, like, 8 out of 10 people will have Roundup, or, like, significant levels of Roundup in their urine. From consuming non-organic wines and fruits they and spray, vegetables, they spray like all that. the all the wheat fields in this country with Roundup before they harvest them. Exactly, all of the flour that you eat has got has got Roundup residue. Okay. For people that are just listening to this show and they haven't met Sam Pillsbury before, uh, Sam Pillsbury is, is a movie producer, movie director. How many films did you do? Forty-two. Uh, I thirty-nine. I made thirty-two feature films. Mm. Thirty-two feature yeah. films. Or, th feature films or cable movies or or t or drama series. It was a lot of mixed up. And what was one of your favorites? My favorite was a little sweet movie called Starlight Hotel, which hardly anybody has seen. It got oh. a, it got a couple of really lovely reviews. My most impactful movies were probably Three Willy Three. And a movie called *The Quiet Earth*, which I wrote and produced, which is a science fiction movie I made in in 40 years ago. Okay. Wow. In mean, New Zealand, ago. about a, a scientist who wakes up one morning and everybody's disappeared and he has to figure it out. And it became a cult. We thought it was a disaster. <laughs> it became a cult classic. Um, do you know who wow. Neil deGrasse Tyson is? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's one yes. of his favorite sci-fi movies of all time. Really? really? And he likes really? big budget sci-fi movies. I made it for a million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all awesome. done. We'll well, 40 years have... ago, that's, uh, that's a pretty big budget back do, then, Do you right? know what? I received a check check for $45,000 last year just from sale. I own the movie. From sales of that movie alone, that was 40 years ago. That's wow. impressive. Wow. My, my movies have helped me fund the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Why don't you make a new movie about wine? <laughs> Honey, I made movies for 40 years. I just don't want to make any more. I'm just sorry. make one it's, last it's, one it's about hard, you. No, it's, hard, it's hard to imagine, but, but I... I even like people send me scripts and say, mm -hmm. "Can you read the script?" <laughs> oh, I got a page one. Of that. I, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just add it up to here. What if you have somebody funding it? I if somebody, think, if think. somebody came to me with okay. a script that I loved and said it's fully funded and you have total complete con creative control, I would do it. Okay, but that just doesn't happen. 
Yeah. Maybe it will happen. <laughs> I just saw an interview with Francis Ford Coppola uh, mm -hmm. on Sunday night, and he, even after making two of the greatest American movies ever, Godfather 1 and Godfather 2, he was in a complete disaster with Apocalypse Now. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're really excited to have you here in studio, uh, be drinking your wine. Uh, which my my glass is empty. Well, honey, I filled it twice. <laughs> Can I have a little you're supposed to you're supposed to taste it, not just drink it. Think a moose fast. Thank you. What what is our pie we're eating from uh, oh, the Giving Tree? That's a rose cardamom cheesecake. Oh cheesecake, it's I one, love cheesecake. It's one of my favorite combinations. And the reason Thank I you. love doing cheesecake is we all know what it, the texture of it is. We know what the flavor of it is, and we know that it's loaded with dairy and eggs and cheese mm -hmm. and mm. this is mm. every wow. bit uh, is delicious the consistency and the mm. texture of mm -hmm. it is spot on and yet it's health food what's in it right cashews mainly in a cashews. yogurt that we make we make cashew yogurt uh cashews and the rest of it is basically a cheesecake recipe you know you, you can use a little bit of lemon zest and a little bit of lemon juice and some uh, vanilla and that's basically it this is Scrumptious. I well, the, the blueberry cheesecake. I mean, I could not tell that this was it had no dairy. I mean, it's 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 creamy. It's delicious. It still has that zest, uh, that almost sour but sweet mm. taste. It's fantastic. You, you know, yeah. You know, pe people always think that going going organic or going vegan are, are more expensive and more trouble. They actually really aren't. You just have to think more mm -hmm. you know and we we do vegan we all the dinners that we do we do dinners all the time all of them have a vegan option um and beautiful they're mostly um they're mostly vegetarian anyway um but you just you just have to think a little more and it doesn't farming organically is not more expensive but it takes a little you know you can't just dial up monsanto you have to think about it and yep. i think it's the same with what you're talking about with food when i listen to you talk sam about the hard work that goes into the uh weed extraction process it's the same thing with us it's a lot more difficult to do what we do but it's actually not more expensive yeah. it just takes more it takes more time more, and more, more intelligence you, know, yeah, you have to be yeah. a little bit more forethought and yep. a little bit more consciousness yep. Yep. but you put out product like this mm -hmm. that instead of being something that you've got to feel guilty about it's actually health food it might be the healthiest mm. thing you've eaten in a week yeah, I eat yeah. very healthy, and it's not too sweet. I do sweet. eat very healthy. It's, it's, I know that. No, no, I really do. For the average person, I probably eat healthier than you do. We do. We, <laughs> we, 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 we do dinners. Salmon, we do spinach, dinners yeah. at our vineyard where all the food was either grown by me on the property, foraged from the desert around us, or bought from somebody in town that we know who grew it organically. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. And you're you are a trained chef, or just. Self-taught chef. I'm a because I've had your Jeremy, pa Jeremy Pacheco. Jeremy Pacheco, who's the executive chef for all of the Vig Group. He used to be the the uh, executive chef at Lons, and I was a guest chef there every year. He mm. I, the other day I I was talking to him about something because we're doing a big event that he's going to come and cook for, and I said, I said, so and so, who what is he? And I said, oh, he works for me. He's a scratch chef. And I said. What's a scratch chef? And he said, you're a scratch chef. <laughs> <laughs> it's somebody who kind of self-taught and mm -hmm. put it all together, you know, gotcha. by yeah. scratch, I guess. I've never heard that term before. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> well, your food is delicious. Oh, I'm so, when's the next dinner? Um, when's the next uh, dinner? Uh, Labor weekend at the vineyard. Okay, we're we'll so all going. Sunday the, Sunday the 6th. Come okay. lovely. Come Let's lovely. go. Eating Let's outside go. amongst the vines. We'll be there. Everything will be cooked by me and my friends. Mm -hmm. Done. Chat, are you in? Um, I'll look at the schedule. <laughs> Chat has been producing and producing and producing his music, and he has a, he's uh, come to his show on uh, this Saturday, uh, Sun Bar, 9 o'clock okay. in Tempe. Okay. Only if you're going to dance, though. Got to wear your dancing shoes. I'll play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play the drums on a rock and roll band. Mm -hmm. Of course so, you did. So, so a couple of things I just want to say very as briefly as possible that are kind of distinctly different about our wines. Is first of all, I make what I call food wines. I don't make cocktail wines. I'm not interested in making the biggest, fruitiest, jammiest, oakiest, highest alcohol fruit bomb, you know, which you can do in the land of endless sunshine like we live in. And then secondly, so I go for more complexity and nuance and cleanness, if for lack of a better term, more like better acidity. And the other thing is I've always felt very strongly there's too much generic food and wine in the world. So we only make wine from the fruit we grow organically ourselves on our property. We ferment all of our wines with the wild yeast that comes in on our grapes from my property. Everything about, we don't, I don't want to make a wine that's made with chemicals from a lab in California or with the taste mm -hmm. of oak from a, a barrel and that comes from mm -hmm. Kentucky or something. So we, we only use neutral oak and stainless steel. 
and I just I just I just want to make simple elegant food wines and I want to make them I want them I want them to come from a place and have been made by a person rather than have been delivered by a truck you know in a bunch of big tanks so. well yeah I mean a 90s 97 percent of the wine that's out there is all made from it, it has it goes through a lab before it uh, gets to us so yeah, you, the, yeah the, and, the, and there's a reason for it also if you're doing bulk if you want to make a profit you, right. you do large quantity if you mm -hmm. do large quantity you can't take chances we ferment everything in barrels so if, if 59 gallons um, goes slightly off i can i can address that i can't do fifty thousand gallons you right know? so right. so to a certain extent it's a choice that i've made to be small and sort of you know, nimble perfect or whatever you want to say <laughs> and you've won awards tell us about the awards you've won we have big won. deal big deal in the biggest toughest wine competition in the united states of america in the san francisco chronicle american wine competition mm -hmm. we've won in the last seven years 71 medals out of 73 entries including nine double golds nine golds they, they've called us up and said no one's ever done this before it's, it's, a, from it's a little a piece of deal. piece of crap land down by the biggest <laughs> <big> board <laughs> For someone who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And what, so what, for any of our listeners oh. that are listening that are thirsty right now, what is the best way for them to purchase your wine? Is it, you can you get go. you can get three of our um, entry level, I call them entry level wines at all um, all total wines. Uh, Wild Child White, Wild Child Red, which are my blends, mm -hmm. and a rosé. And they're all all of our wines are bone dry, no residual sugar, so they'll go well with food. And they're in, they're inexpensive. And, and what we're doing as the years have gone by, and we get we get these amazing rows of medals for some of our wines. I'm pushing the prices up for some of those expensive ones, but I'll always make a red, a white, and a rosé that's affordable because I do not want to become one of those places where you have to, you know, kiss my ass in order to get my <laughs> wine or pay a thousand dollars a bottle. I just don't believe in that stuff, right, you know. Right. But I do need to make a profit. <laughs> so are, you, are you profiting yet? We made our first profit last year out of after 15 years nice. wow. when you plant it's 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 when you plant your own vines that's how right. long it takes it's just what it is and i wanted to i wanted to be the person who who, mm -hmm. who made them everything and watched them carefully and did them the right. way it should be done like you do your food you know? how many acres do you have down in Cochise County? i have a hundred acre block of land and i've got about 27 planted we have about fifteen thousand vines which is around about a hundred tons a year um but I, the funny thing is for all of this excellence that we seem to be achieving for my th 100 acres 16 years ago that has a house, a barn, and a well, I paid what you pay for one acre of land in Napa, and I'm beating all those. Wow. Wow. <laughs> nice. Wow. Very what, nice. What gave you the idea, I'm gonna, I want a winery? Oh, I've always wanted to, I've wanted to do this for maybe since I, before I even started making films. Mm -hmm. When did you fall in love with wine? Uh, when I was 13 on a boat. Mm. My family emigrated from from the States to New Zealand when I was 13 years old. And we went, in those days, um, you couldn't really fly to New Zealand. Well, you could, but it would take an awful lot. We, we, took a, we, we went on an Italian ocean liner. And every night, they put a carafe of Chianti on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there we were in the middle of the ocean with liberal parents. And so yeah. I sipped it, and I just thought it was great. I'll never forget holding that glass up to the light and watching that radiant red color. and that, and the smell of the wine, the taste, and the way it made you feel a little, mm -hmm. a little dopey. And I've, I've loved wine ever since. So it was a, that was a long time ago. That was 1960. Dang. Wow, that's amazing. There really is something unique about the, like, just the buzz and the aesthetic from drinking wine. It's so mm -hmm. different from any other kind of yeah. liquor or beer. Mm -hmm. It's a different experience. And especially if it has it that kind of, that, that kind of complexity that, that we strive for in all of our wines, where it actually it glows in your mouth and it and it lasts and it makes the food taste better i mean the, the, when you get a food and wine pairing right it is it is exultant you know mm -hmm. i mean that wine will have never tasted so good that food will have never tasted i mean i've drunk i've drunk i've got i've got a bottle of it here that i've always thought was quite good i had it with a, a, a some food the other day and it wasn't even my pairing with someone else i'm like holy crap this wine's crap. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just about so so when we do dinners we, we we don't just put wine on the table we spend a long time pairing the food with mm -hmm. those actual dishes and and w when we do them at, at our tasting rooms which is where we do our dinners we have you know it's a tasting room so there's like 20 open bottles so we can actually go through and try 20 different versions with with every dish and we'll we get it right man and it makes a difference okay i love this so let's do your favorite uh food pairing with the wild child white the wild child red and the rose so that way if there's somebody that's listening that 
It's like, I'm going to go to Total Wine and buy those three. Now they're going to have the three food pairings they can cook with it. That's a smart right. idea. The have problem, a whole night. Yeah, but the, the problem with that is a food pairing, you can't say it. For example, I will, I will get a restaurant, send me a menu, and, and they'll say, what do, you, what do you want to pair with these foods? And I look and I go, this dish, how much cumin is in it? You know, mm -hmm. you actually, exactly. you mm -hmm. can't do it on paper, you know. So, so I do make the wild child white to go with, uh, the wild child white, the wild child red, and the rosé are all, are all in, in that area where they're good wines, but they'll go with a lot of different foods. I think I would, re with the wild child white, which is my favorite of those three, I'd probably go with like a seafood dish. That's probably very, like halibut or something. No, no, absolutely, for seafood or maybe chicken. It's definitely mm -hmm. not a steak wine, you yeah. know. Um, and the, the ro rosé is interesting. Rosé is a, pro a proper Provencal-style rosé. Um, the French drink, people don't know this, the French drink five times more rosé than any other wine. And for a bunch of reasons. It's always inexpensive. It's usually really low in alcohol, so you can have a glass for lunch without you know, needing to go to sleep. But it will pair with anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, do we have any rosé right now? No, I didn't have any in my fridge. Okay, what's our second wine we're going to chase? Oh, you're a brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we only have an hour. <laughs> Here we go. Gabe, how much more time do we have? Um, about... She needs one of those like beer helmets. With the <laughs> <laughs> Red on one side, white on the other. So by the way, this dessert is so delicious, and uh, it's it paired really nicely with the Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope it's going to pair nicely with what's this now. I didn't want to toot my own horn, but I was thinking that when you're talking about wine pairing, the Chardonnay and that uh, rose cardamom cheesecake is out of this world. It's out of this world. A little more, please. Okay, honey. <laughs> We're tasting here. We're not drinking. Okay. Is this the barbecue wine? Um, yeah, no, this is this is um, this is Thank a you. wine. This is actually a wine that's made with um, Malvasia and Symphony. And you probably don't know what either of those wines are, but Malvasia is an Italian aromatic that originated in Greece. It favors the south of Italy. It does really well in sandy, hot places, and it loves Arizona. And we have three. T we have twice won best of class in the Chronicle mm. for this wine, which was wow. the wow. best Malvasia entered in that competition. And this is blended with a wine called Symphony, which was developed by UC Davis over a period of fifty years. And it's another aromatic. It's a cross of Grenache, Gris, and Muscat of Alexandria. And I make them. I pick them early, and I make them more delicate because if you make them into fruit bombs, they're really impressive, but they don't pair with food. When you make them more delicately, you release a lot of the nuance that's actually there, and they become more complex. Yeah. What, is this called Sweet Lies? No, this is called Inappropriate. It's named after. Oh. Me. <laughs> I love uh, it. Uh, Perfect. Uh, the nose on this is amazing. <laughs> it's an intensity. Yeah. 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 Okay. Totally is there another glass? Oh, case of Inappropriate. For oh, you yeah, for Chet. Oh, yeah, okay. Here we go. Cool. Yeah, this thing, I don't want to be a party of so powerful. No, no, no. Well, if it's inappropriate, Chet's I'm off. I'm getting like, melon. I'm getting. It'll suit you perfectly. Uh, can, can you honey know a, a bottle of color? I think we talked about this last time. Oh, and I've got to give a Pumpkin. review on the uh, chocolate hazelnut pie. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I can taste. Is oh, there well, some coconut good. in that's there? That's great. But it's really good, though. It's like mm. the right amount. Yeah, the, the crust that's is delicious. coconut Cheers. dates and uh, cacao nibs. And that's all there is to it. So you can make it at home in five mm. minutes. Mm. And you spread out your crust. Mm. And then the chocolate pudding goes on top. That's as easy as that. That could well, maybe be my favorite. To make. Mm. There you go. Isn't that so good? Wow. I mean, the, 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 the thing is that the more intense a wine is, the harder it is to pair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, so this will go with... Um, like spicy Asian stir fry, if you like, you know, or something like that. Um, whereas the Chardonnay will actually will actually pair with more food. Also, Chardonnay is not so fruity, so it doesn't dominate um, your palate when you're pairing it with food. It tends, Chardonnay tends to be a really good food wine. This well, is this will go with barbecued salmon, like mm -hmm. you die for, you know. But well, like you said, your Chardonnay is barbecue jackfruit pancake, wouldn't it? I'm gonna have some. Chardonnay. Your Chardonnays are very different. I mean, there's really two main styles of, of Chardonnay in the United States, right? The buttery and then more of the stainless steel what yeah right well, so this is I don't, neither yeah right this that's, it definitely this can taste that it's different this i ferment all of my whites in barrels so they're um so they're when they're fermenting you're getting what the french call batonnage which is where you stir a barrel it mm -hmm. actually it actually agitates the wine so you're getting the the lees of the wine and where there's a lot of fruitiness right in the wine but then what we do is I inhibit malolactic fermentation on all the whites because I don't want them to get that buttery, fat and, and mm -hmm. fruity and everything because it because it tends to dominate the food and you can't mm -hmm. taste the food anymore. So it's a Thank bit of a so. tricky process, and that's the only 
I'm into minimal intervention. Inhibiting ML is not minimal <laughs> intervention. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's where I cross that line. But it makes it, it makes I a big difference pork? with the wines. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I mean, if, if Arizona soil was more acidic, we wouldn't have to do that. But it's not. It's quite high in pH. So it's kind mm -hmm. of a, um, um, an alternative way. I've chosen to do it to try to keep the, that kind of um, um, original clarity and cleanness from the wine. Gotcha. Oh, that, this is actually one of my favorites. This yeah. inappropriate. Yeah. I love this it. Try that. And what a great You just like the name. I do. I love the taste. And I love the name. I think when you go to a birthday party or some kind of, just any kind of a get gathering, and you bring a bottle of your wine, A, you're supporting sustainability, local, the wonderful Sam Pillsbury, and your wines are so delicious, incredible, they won all these awards, and the names are so cool. <laughs> They're all based on real things, too. I mean, I mean, the trickiest one of all is inappropriate. Um, all of them, all of them are based on events. Usually, you know, like they say, an, an airline crash is always three reasons, not just one. Well, all of our right. ones have three reasons for their names, and we do these posters to explain that with a painting or photographs and, and a, like a writing in it. Inappropriate. We originally just started calling it Symphony because that was the grape, and people thought that was an a fanciful name. And you know, um, um, so I just thought, well, no, no, okay, this is still keeping keeping to our sort of our. our Ethic, which is to always have the names be meaningful, so um, so we decided to name it after me. And then <laughs> <laughs> people see that name and they want to try the wine. It's quite interesting, and it's a, it's now, a good people will pick your wines because of the names too. Well, they they're, 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 a lot of thought goes into them, and it is funny the whole inappropriate thing. The other day, somebody somebody pulled up to our winery and they parked right in front of the of the, the pathway to the front door, and I said. I walked, I didn't know who they were working on. I said, hey, would you mind moving your effing car? And they said, you must be Sam Pillsbury. <laughs> <laughs> I love yes. his feistiness. <laughs> Gabe, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but uh, it's really hot in here. Like, I, I feel like I'm blowing up it here. Hot, yeah. It's so hot. Please, if you can turn down the air. So, <clears throat> David, what did you just uh, pass us? This is amazing. Well, Sam had mentioned a spicy Middle Eastern mm -hmm. dish, mm -hmm. and I happen to have some lentil dal. Now, it's not piping hot the way I intended it to be served, but it's that a delicious, mm -hmm. very hearty, grounding, earthy, spicy, mm. delicious, yeah. energetic lentil dish. So it's an inexpensive dish, but the spice combination is very exotic, well balanced, mm -hmm. and then there's a little bit of a mango chutney with it as well. Mm. Oh, and get that little that sweetness. with the inappropriate, it's mm. a it's a perfect. It's a good one. It's yeah, a good it's one. Really and good. lentils are amazing. I, they, you can do so many things. They're with so versatile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lentils are so ubiquitous. Exactly. Yeah, this this <laughs> is the kind of food that gives me the food high. Like you know, the, you were talking about the mm. wine makes you feel a certain way. But really, truly healthy food that's well spiced gives you another type of, of high a sense of do, well being. Do you know? True. Always notice this is when you have, when you have, a, and even a burger can do this. By the way, mm -hmm. I mean I hardly ever eat them, but mm -hmm. I, I love a good burger. Shortly after you've eaten it, you can li if you're if you're sensitive to what's happening, you can feel this glow mm -hmm. starting in your stomach and spreading out through your whole body. And when you eat. Sh it doesn't do that. Nope. It makes you feel like like somebody's dropped a ton of lead down your throat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of feeling the glow yeah. spread through yeah. your body, it feels like poison's just starting to course through your veins. You're like, no, seriously, ah. like, like I got a shot in the stomach. Like, uh -huh. it, it just be aware of it because the other Thank thing is that if you're if you're fixated on 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 fast food and junk food, you mostly become addicted to fat, sugar, and salt. And if you it's, people talk about how hard it is to give them up, but if you change your mindset mm -hmm. and don't think about what it tastes like at the time, think about how it will make you feel mm -hmm. for an hour after you so ate it. You'll stop wanting them. You just don't want them anymore. Yeah. And um, this is so true because uh, I took a long break. I didn't have any McDonald's for a really long time. And I broke down and had it for the first time on a food on a road trip. And you felt terrible. Terrible. <laughs> like, literally like I was poisoned. And, yeah. um, I also saw a video saying that they put like MSG and a bunch of other like flavoring salts in their food. The that's... protein in them isn't even meat yeah, anymore, yeah, and it's actually so got, it's actually been treated with chemicals so much yeah. it's actually carcinogenic. It yeah. just don't even go there. You know? I heard it's like chopped up rats. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me, honestly. But if you don't mind me getting on the theme here of sustainability, when you know that you eat a certain thing and your body is telling you. It doesn't sustain me. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, that's the, that's the, exactly what happened. That's exactly yeah. it. So, mm -hmm. for, from a sustainability standpoint as well, it just doesn't work. Whereas Sam's wines, uh, paired mm -hmm. with organic natural food, 
we can all feed the entire planet this way with much to spare and inexpensively. Do you know that wine, wine first of all, the Ag Department just found mm -hmm. out wine is the only agricultural crop in the state that's not in decline. Secondly, wine grapes take one-seventh the amount of water of any other ag crop. Thirdly, um, wine when it's made into um, growing grapes and when it's made into wine it has got has got a um, what, what do you call that additive function? So you're not just growing a crop and selling it; you're actually making wine with it, which means that you buy all sorts of stuff from the local economy. You hire people. The right. government gets right. taxed on the wine you sell. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of the most sustainable crops you can you can you can oh, grow. Yeah. It's just, so it's drink it. <laughs> <laughs> so drink well it. So drink it. Well done. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're hearing it now. Support the local economy and drink Pillsbury wine. But, uh, <laughs> also, know, go to the uh, Giving Tree Cafe because this food that Dave has brought in is amazing. Oh, it's amazing. amazing. It's, it's so delicious. delicious. Is there more? Yeah, uh, did we get to more. try the brownie? Oh, she saw that brownie. Uh, is, is this way. the first restaurant that you've opened? or This is my 25th restaurant. Wow, okay. Yes. So and we want to plug gonna... some of those other restaurants then? We should give them all some love. Well, <laughs> the main one I want to talk about, my daughter and I opened a restaurant in Sedona 14 years ago called Chocolate Tree and became kind of a, a well-known, very successful place. My daughter still owns it, and she's still up there running it. Mm. And because Chocolate, Chocolate Tree. Tree's success, people started asking us, literally on day one, please open up something like this down in the valley. Mm -hmm. And so it took me 12 years, but that's why we're here, to offer, again, 100% organic, gluten-free, soy-free, vegan meals. And, uh, and you we, said you want to open up a, a bunch more restaurants here in Arizona. Yeah, the, the plan is to open up five or six more in the Phoenix area and then go across the country because, quite frankly, I talk to people all the time from mm -hmm. all over America that are trying to eat healthy, and it's so difficult, especially when you're traveling, to get a healthy meal. Like you were just talking it about is. how you're on a road trip and you stopped at the Golden Arches and because it, it, there's no other option. That was literally the only reason why I would eat there is because it was the only option. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes back to how we were saying eating that kind of food is so unsustainable. And a lot of people are just basically addicted to that unhealthy food and they can't even realize and break the cycle of mm -hmm. how bad it is for them. You know, I, I learned a long time ago doing road trips with my family is that you, if you go to small towns, you don't have to eat at McDonald's. There's almost always a supermarket and you can go in there to the deli and get them to make you a sandwich. So it's not that complicated. You just, again, you just have to think about it a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. That is actually normally what I would do. It was like middle, middle of the night, like yeah. 3 a.m. Oh, yeah, that's like when groceries... No, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This flourless, flour, gluten-free brownie is amazing. Mm. Thank you. One of the things we love doing at the restaurant is taking a dish as simple as a brownie. Everyone on the planet knows what that's supposed to taste like. Mm -hmm. And again, if we've had gluten-free or if we had vegan before, we might be thinking, well, the texture's gonna be off or the flavor's gonna be off. Right. But it's healthy, so I'll eat it anyway. And then <laughs> you have a bite of this and you go, wow, I, I'm not missing anything. This mm -hmm. is every bit is delicious, the texture's spot on, mm -hmm. and it's 100% health food. This might be, again, the healthiest dessert you've had in months. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because also there's a tendency for people to think that, that if it's healthy or it's vegetable, that, it, that it's just not gonna taste very good. And, and, and what, the, what the people who think that don't understand and realize is that if you actually pick the right ingredients, they taste amazing. I mean, the difference between one of those tomatoes shipped by truck to your supermarket to one that you grow in your backyard, there's no comparison. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and you bought, and so go to farmer's markets. Go to farmer's market on Saturday morning. It, it, it takes 45 minutes and you can stock up for the whole, for the whole week. You're buying things from somebody who grew it. You, you can actually touch their hand when they hand mm -hmm. you the lettuce and you know it was who made it, where it was grown, and then you taste it and it goes, oh my God, there's no comparison. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In, in defense, Sam, I do want to say that we've all been to vegetarian, vegan restaurants where it just wasn't very good. No, it no, was sure. kind of bland, no, it no, was exactly. cardboard, etc. But yep. see, you're speaking as a chef. I'm a chef as well. You do have to have a little bit of intelligent creativity. You, you've, got to, you, you've got to be selective, you know? Exactly. And That's yeah, right. Yeah. I go to, I go to downtown Phoenix market and I get my vegetables from Maya, you know, because sure. I know she grows them and, and I, I know what they taste like. It's not, <laughs> it's not, people get so used to just going shopping and I've talked to people who aren't healthy who do that and I said, just 
change your habits you know mm -hmm. go, go to a farmer's market on a saturday morning it's no big deal and it's actually you can you can talk to people it's fun to meet people yeah yeah it's i mean super it's social fun. too i love know? going to the farmer's market mm -hmm. you guys want to try a red yeah yes, yes we're ready to go the brownie i'm very impressed with uh, it's same very here. rich it's like there's no so like, rich yeah like, yeah, like you, you were saying a whole one of those yeah usually with like a vegan or um this you know, vegetarian go. style brownie you'd expect it to not have the level of richness but this is still very rich this i would agree with that yeah. Thank you. Okay, how do you make this brownie? What is in the brownie? I'll be frank with you. It's a it's a standard recipe. Like Sam is saying, mm -hmm. I'm not recreating the, the the wheel here. It's already there. I'm taking the the brownie recipe that probably your grandmother used, and I'm just using all 100% organic natural ingredients. Oh, go so, but, 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 I mean, you have nuts. Instead what, of in instead of butter and eggs, I'm using coconut oil. Mm -hmm. The flour blend, there's, we're gluten-free, so there's no wheat flour, but it's a combination of brown rice, white rice, tapioca, and uh, potato starch, mm. chocolate chips that we make. Cacao, mm. a lot of people don't know, it's the most potent superfood on the planet. Mm -hmm. and what, so, what, what is it? Cacao. 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 Okay. And so it's uh, plenty of cacao, and then again, a little salt, a little vanilla, a little bit of uh, baking powder, and that's it. Try, mm. try it with this wine. This is mm. I can't wait. so good. This is a wonderful pairing, by the way. This it just really is. To be bang on. You know? yep. grab a, the grab consistent and the, the this is just the cover from one of these here. Not not the mouthfeel of both is just fantastic. Do we have another glass for Gabe? Um, so are you not with your diet? Are you totally Sorry, vegan then as well, glass. or is that just a choice with the restaurant? The vegan, the restaurant's 100% vegan. I eat cheese and eggs maybe uh, five to ten times a year. I don't really stress over it. You saw the other day when I was out with you, I had no stress over eating the Correct. feta cheese that was on that, on that uh, salad. And I really believe that's probably as human beings how we're meant to eat. Mm -hmm. These people don't know this. David's like 92 right now. And so we're <laughs> do, 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 you, do you do you know one of the one of the simplest devices um, methods that I've learned of for for learning how to live and eat healthily we all evolved as hunter gatherers mm -hmm. so just imagine this you're walking outside all day every day you're surrounded by um, people uh, that you know and who protect you and help and support you some days you're gonna eat nothing but root vegetables mm -hmm. some days you're not gonna eat anything for three days sometimes you're gonna eat a whole animal you know mm -hmm. sometimes you're gonna have you're gonna have <laughs> seeds and roots and green stuff Think about it. Variation you know? is key. Oh, and and also n not eating regularly all the time either, and exactly. and Variation. walking and walking all day and being outside. You know, mm -hmm. want to know what I do at my vineyard? That's how I live. You know? <laughs> I'm 95. <laughs> <laughs> so one question I have for you, Sam, is because I am also in a profession where it is hard to escape. You know, having drinks. You know, when I work in nightlife, when I work at clubs, DJing, there's always free drinks. People handing me free drinks and stuff. Um, and you working at a vineyard, I'm sure it's the same thing. It's like, not. It's, it's not. not. No, okay. I, it, it's like, to me, it's like mechanics, cars, and builders' houses. I'm surrounded by this stuff all day. It's it's on my clothes. It's on my hands. I'm smelling it. I'm, it's it's I, it's sticking together to me. I get back to the house at the end of the day. All I want is a friggin' beer or a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm surrounded by a million dollars worth of wine. You know, so it's a so, bit like those movie scripts I started mm -hmm. telling you. About How many George. times do you drive back and forth? Once a week. I do 800 miles a week. So you need to have a Porsche. Yeah. No, because yes, no. Porsches. I can't. I can't. Porsches better than sex. I, I can't carry. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you need. A I can't carry th thirty cases of wine in a Porsche, honey. That's I drive a Subaru station wagon. I do forty-five thousand miles. Well, a you year. need to meet David Zalato, the GM no, no, of Scott's Porsche. Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have. I have a three hundred Z Nissan that does one hundred and fifty miles an hour. I know all about that shit. But, um, <laughs> but I, can't, I know I've driven with you. I can't. I can't. Carry, driven, I can't carry enough wine. In uh, a, in Sam a puts Porsche. the pedal to the metal. I have my competition license. <laughs> <laughs> I legally can race. I used to build cars. <laughs> what have you not done? What haven't you done? <laughs> well, seriously, what have you not done? Never got an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. I, do, I've, I do a lot of, I've done a lot of different things, but um, I don't know, I don't, I don't think I've ever, this is probably the best thing I've ever done, actually. This is phenomenal, and you're right. The the balance, the nuances. So good. It's it's an it's mm, interesting. It's complexity. It makes me think, complexity right. is hard to do, and it's like anyone can do big, especially when the, the that, sun shines all the time. Mm -hmm. This so, is this takes some skill and some cleverness. Yeah, I'm, I'm very very impressed. Oh, thank you. Okay, the and one thing delicious. I was going to say that I can personally vouch for Pillsbury wines uh, that you can tell the difference that it's organic and made with such quality and precision 
because they don't give me headaches. Unorganic yeah. wines give me headaches. Bingo. It's a hundred percent you can drink, correlation. You can drink a whole bottle of any one of my wines. You will not have a headache. You'll exactly. be a little tired, but you will not. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have a headache. I know, and you heard only, right here the no headache guarantee. And only organic wines can I drink because other non-organic wines they give me a headache after two glasses. But Pillsbury wines and other organic small. You know, boutique Local. wineries, exactly. Mm -hmm. By the way, just so you know, I'm not certified organic. I haven't gone through that process, and I'm not going to. If I have to spray with something that's not organic to save my vineyard, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we just don't, you know, and, and so that's how we live. And that's but, how but the smaller are, operations you're not, you're that really care about, about it do organic. it. We don't use chemical sprays. Or no, I believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. He cares about the earth and he cares about saving the planet one, one show, show at a time. And that's one of the advantages of supporting <clears throat> local, because when you're supporting local businesses, it's usually an entrepreneur who cares about the operation, who's going to run it as clean and efficiently as possible, with less pesticides, you know, less junk. So Absolutely. when you go and buy from a big corporation, they don't care about you. They just care about the money you're putting in their pocket. Mm -hmm. But entrepreneurs like Sam and like David, they really care about the product that they're putting out there and their heart and soul goes into it. And we, you know, we care more about quality than, than making a profit, which is why um, when people ask, ask me if I want a certificate when I donate something, I say, no, I'm already a nonprofit. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so important, Sam has, has donated to so many different charities. Mm -hmm. Every time I've called him to say, hey, will you donate to Child Health? Will you donate to this charity, that charity? He always says yes, and he's right spot on there. Yes, which, which I'm going to be asking you for Alice Cooper <laughs> and Cheryl Cooper. On the spot with rock. Kinga. I've, <laughs> That's right. I've figured out a way to do, to do magnificent donations to charity that actually benefit everybody. And I can tell you about it when we okay. do it now. Okay. But, but, um, so it's not just giving one way. It's being smarter than that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I want to do some dinners. Well, well, sure, sure, sure. I told you about it's that. About okay, we'll yeah. talk about that. Mm -hmm. So, so Chet, yeah, sir, you're going to your friend. Anything else from you? Or do you want to tell us more about what you're doing? And what... Well, the, um, the mission for Giving Tree Cafe is very much what Kinga and her show is all about. We are totally, totally. Yes, totally. Uh -huh. Totally louder. Enmeshed in sustainability, and that comes first. And when you go into the restaurant, there's a uh, manifesto on the wall, and the very first thing that we talk about is how we, number one, are sustainable, sustainable going forward seven generations. So we have to be organic or we can't be sustainable. Right. So the thing that sets us apart more than all of the other vegan restaurants is the 100% organic part of it. Mm -hmm. So it's why I admire what you're doing so much, Sam, because I know it takes extra effort. And I know, quite frankly, most of the people, it goes over their head right now. Eventually, people mm -hmm. will figure it out and start paying attention to it. but. The dedication that you have and the the will that you have to and the determination to continue to do it in the right way even if not everybody notices it I, I admire that so much i really want to thank you for what you're well, doing thank you and we i, all I, want to I thank think you. i think thank you. you i don't think most people do notice here. and it doesn't thank matter you. i thank i you. just i just um you know i have a very simple rule that i live by everything you do either makes the world a better place mm -hmm. or a worse place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you pick a cigarette butt off the off the sidewalk, you've made the world a better place. If you drop one, you've made it a worse place. So it's not that hard to figure out how to live. Leave like everything that. better than you found. And as well. Thank Cheers. You. I love that. Sir. Thank that. you very it's much. Making the world a better place. Can I piggyback on that a little bit? Please. For the people that are listening to this, that are wondering, well, sustainability. I'm into it. I want to do more of it. How do I do it? One of the things that you can think about with every purchase you make is think about. Am I doing something that's actually sustainable, mm -hmm. or am I doing something that's probably just going to get gobbled up in corporate never never land and I'll never see it again? Vote and with so your again, dollars. exactly, every dollar we spend is a vote. And so again, when we can go to the farmers markets that you mentioned, when we can buy Pillsbury wines, when we can go to the local um, honey vendor and the local. Uh, Farmers, etc. The Giving Tree Cafe. You can plug yourself. <laughs> Do it. Plug yourself. Or, 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 buying a, or buying a Porsche from Scott's Porsche, an electric Porsche, the it, Taycan. I love it. That it's like driving a spaceship. Our cash register goes to our staff that live within a few miles of our restaurant mm -hmm. and Thanks. goes to their farmers that are nearby. It goes to the, the local people here, and that money gets churned in our community time and time and time again. Right. And it's so much worth it to make that extra step. If you want to go to one of those Golden Arches places, there's so many reasons not to, but for Pete's sake, think about 
your dollars and the sustainability that your dollars have and do the right thing most of the time and it's fun yeah, well and more than that too there's another thing is i feel very strongly that um if people if people choose to drink a local wine or eat or eat a local mm -hmm. vegetarian product out of for ideological reasons um i feel very strongly and i'm sure you do too that my responsibility is to make sure that this is a fabulous wine. You're not mm -hmm. you're not buying it because it's going to make you feel good or it's moral. You're also going to buy it because it it's tastes good. better. That's right. And that's what fresh, organically grown food tastes like too. It tastes better, guys. So it's higher being, quality. Yeah, you're yes. being you're being smart. You're being better for your body. You're, you're not only helping helping the world that you inhabit, but you you're making yourself happier. You're, you're going to live longer. It goes on and on. You know. So so it's that's a responsibility I feel very strongly, and I can tell from your food that you do too. Thank you, Sam. I was just going to say, I don't know where these wines are in the hierarchy of the, the best to the worst that you have, but these are some of the finest wines I've ever had in my life. These blow me away. See, are they are. so delicious? You, uh, you have so great. I have to say, sir, you have exquisite taste. Thank you very much. <laughs> so do we have wine yet? Can we have at your Sedona restaurant? They at the do. chocolate yeah, they do. Okay, do they have Pillsbury wine yet? Not yet, but okay. they will. Tomorrow. Here, come Tomorrow. Guys. This, <laughs> Tomorrow. This is a, this Tomorrow. is a more intense red. Now, this is, uh, I call this Diva. It's named after a, a kid who visited my beach house once. He spent the whole week doing cartwheels on is the beach. Is this in New Zealand? This is in New Zealand. What? This is a, a this is my version of a, of a French Chateau Neuf de Pape. This is a pretty pretty fine red. You know? Chateau Neuf de Pape? Yes. I'm ready. The Diva's ready. The Diva's ready. The Diva's, I've been making this since 2006. Would this pair well with roasted vegetables? Uh, yes, particularly if you if you had um, ha had them like with some marinated portobello mm. mushrooms, uh, um, some some. I'll let you decide. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. oh, you tricky bastard! Oh, that's, that's great. Right. That's great. Yeah. Let's do that here. Mm. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Mm -hmm. So far, my favorite is the inappropriate, the flavor profile Shocking. and the wine. <laughs> <laughs> or the name, it's like all, top to bottom, that bottle is just—it's got me. Don't park your effing car there. <laughs> <laughs> so for bottles like inappropriate, would that be better found on your website then? Yeah, or? that won't be in in. Um, um, it might be in AJ's or Trevor's. It won't be in Total Wines. Okay. But, um, you could, by the way, if you live in Phoenix, you can order off the website and get free delivery. Okay, is that PillsburyWine.com? Yes. Now? Okay, cool. Right. Sweet, give it a little plug. I'm doing this one. Okay, I my favorite is Inappropriate and... Um, Morved? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the best Morvedres mm -hmm. you've ever made. Funny, mm -hmm. in France, Morvedre is almost never a varietal. It's always a blender, but we, it, it, it you know... I, I just want to say another little thing about growing wine grapes in Arizona. The terroir that, that, that terroir is a French word that means place. It actually literally soil, means like soil. That. Yeah, but it means place. All the things about that place. And in order, in order to get the right temperature profiles to grow wine grapes in Arizona, you've got to go high altitude because it's too hot in Phoenix, okay? So um, another thing that people don't know, people laugh in my face and say, you, you are an idiot trying to grow wine grapes in Arizona. You must be stupid. All Vitis vinifera, which is the classical wine grape variety that you make wine from, not all grapes can make great wine, all originated in southeastern Anatolia, in the Middle East, in Turkey. They don't like fertile soil. They like the desert. Mm -hmm. um, and then, the, and then where, where, where you grow and where we grow, we're at 4,500 feet. This is like a secret weapon. Every thousand feet you go up above sea level, you get 10% more UV. So we, we get 40% more UV than almost any other vineyard in the world. It has a profound effect on the fruit. It makes the skin thicker to protect the, to protect the fruit from the sun. Skins is where aroma and color and tannins <coughs> and, and taste comes from. Mm -hmm. the, the land is incredibly cheap. We have perfect water. We have, we, have, we have endless sunshine during the day. In France, they struggle to ripen their fruit. We have no problem at all, but it... But if, if it stayed hot all night long, they would ripen too quickly and they'd taste boring. So it drops 40 degrees at night at high altitude. So this massive diurnal, tem diurnal temperature swings mm -hmm. makes, makes such a difference. We have these insane storms and this wind storms in the spring like they do in the south of France from the Mistral. It's a pain in the ass. It rips all the tars off of your roof, but it blows away all predatory insects and mold spores. It, it purifies the land. I mean, we have this is this magical gift we have, and nobody knows about it yet, <laughs> well, except for Sam Pillsbury. <laughs> no, there's 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 120 bonded wineries in the state. People have got it here, but I thought 20 years ago I thought California would be out here. I I I, I looked for a thousand acres of land because I was going to make a killing. 
not a peep, not the slightest bit of interest. They've got fires, they've got taxes, they've got endless mm -hmm. labor problems. They have no friggin' the land is expensive. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird world, you know? It is a weird world. Well, you lived in Malibu for quite a while. I have a house um, halfway between Malibu and Santa Monica, which I designed and built, and I rent it out, mm. and it pays the mortgage on my vineyard. So you still have it. <laughs> it's a twenty-four hundred square foot house, three blocks from the ocean. I rent it out for eight thousand five hundred dollars a month. Oh my goodness! And it pays it pays all my mortgages. How That's much you rent it out for? Eight and a half thousand unfurnished. Yeah. Wow! Wow! I wow. built it. I built it, and I built it twenty-six years ago. Mm -hmm. mm designed and built it. I love it. Well, I poured a little more inappropriate because I feel a little more. I'd love to be inappropriate. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so how do you not have like a thousand girlfriends after you with all, you know, I do. Movie? <laughs> I know, I've seen it. <laughs> oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. <laughs> I'm too busy though. I haven't got time for that kind of shit. You know, so I love that uh, Pillsbury Wines is basically a passion project. You're obsessed with it. Um, so totally. I want to pick your brain. What is your single favorite wine that you make that you've well, ever the, made? The thing is, it, it's interesting. I make like 18. But gun to your head, someone's like, you have one last glass of one of your wines. Which one are you going to go with? Uh, I probably. Kisses you know, or Guns and Roses. Guns and Kisses. Guns, guns and, and kisses. kisses for the Reds and Chardonnay for the Whites, probably. But I make them to go with different foods, so it's not that simple. You know, mm -hmm. like if, you were, if it was a cocktail, it would be a different experience. Okay, right? so if you're getting executed, what's your last meal? <laughs> <laughs> Or it's something crazy. Yeah, that food I, pairing. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly drink it's, whites it's, because it's, Arizona's hot, you know, and I want yeah, something cool. Yeah. I even make a barbecue white to go with barbecue. So delicious. Yeah. So delicious. Um, prob possibly Viognier. I didn't bring a Viognier today, but that's a pretty... Uh, Mark Tarbell 15 my... years ago said that I make the best Viognier in America. Yeah. yeah that, oh, that's speaking that's of Tarbell's, I have to tell you right now, he has a... Uh, local bag of six wines that you can buy and he reduces the price a little bit and your bottle is in that in bag okay. and I keep buying that and it's okay. I think it's like I'm not sure $150 when it's you probably as a result of the showdown you had with one of the salespeople remember where where he, you, they, 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 they support local they do wine. They do you went in there to get wine. something and the guy tried to talk you out of having an Arizona wine and you told me about this remember well I was with Richard Betts I, oh, the truth reveal oh. yes yes Anyway, he we've we've talked about it. We had a little period of time. Okay, so now let's jump. To the same question: What is ah, your favorite yes. entree at the Giving Tree? That you're Ooh. like, if someone's listening right now that's excited to come in and try the restaurant, what's your favorite thing? The number one recommendation? You're like, this is our dish, our magnum opus, if you will. <laughs> Probably the most popular dish in the menu, by far, is the crunch wrap and there are five different flavors of it. But this Buddha bowl is actually, I think, our signature dish. And tell us what, what all is in that. Before I do that though, the third part of the answer is if the guest is coming in and only having one meal in the restaurant, I'd want them to have the barbecue jackfruit pancake. Mm. It's the dish that probably is the most exciting, that surprises people the most in a way that just, it just blows people away. That there's something that's sweet and that's savory together. It's comfort food. It's delicious. It's satisfying, etc. What temperature do you serve that at? It's a it's a hot dish. So it's, so if I took that home, should I put it in a toaster oven for a couple of minutes? Could do. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Can Perfect. I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. yes yeah. Please. Or well, come, come to the restaurant. I'll make you whatever you like. <laughs> nice uh, many I only really have two I minutes have left. I don't have time. I've got to go down to the vineyard at dawn tomorrow morning. And start I'm, I'm not saying right now, but no, I'm, no, just, I'm literally seven minutes away. So you come in and okay. be my guest anytime. Okay. So. okay. so in two, two minutes, in closing, what what's on your bucket list, and what are we gonna? What are we achieving? Getting this restaurant open probably is on the Well, it's not a restaurant. <laughs> no, no, it's a really fun, interesting story. We we were one of the. We were one of the first, when I, when I, with Eric Glomsky with Stronghold and me with Pillsbury, we opened our tasting rooms in Cottonwood 13 years ago, mm -hmm. and that town was dead. It was Oh, yeah, it was nothing. Seven years ago, the Arizona Republic said it was the gourmet destination for Phoenix, and it, it, is. And it was us who did that. Absolutely. And now There's it's no so busy that. that we're actually moving out of Old Town Cottonwood. I bought a house a mile up the hill. Mm -hmm. We don't have a kitchen. We don't have a patio where we are. This is a 
a three and a half thousand square foot house with a commercial kitchen which we put in right. on two acres. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred and eighteen year old three and a half thousand cool. square foot house, and it's just, we've already had bookings for three monstrous gatherings there. So we're so excited. And we're opening yeah, in, a, in like about a six weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in the green room we'll have a party there. Oh, we definitely all gotta have get to up travel there. there chat. We're all gonna go. <laughs> Sounds and, like a blast. Does that sound good. Uh, so when we'll wait till the weather's better is maybe for my birthday. Well, and it sounds like they're right in the middle of harvest. So well, it, <laughs> yeah, you've got harvest. You're this dealing is two hundred miles from the This is two hundred miles from the vineyard. This is up north. The vineyard's yeah, down yeah. south. So so Cottonwood's a whole different bag. Oh, okay. I'm got, talking about Cottonwood. Oh, Cottonwood. Um, the fit. Uh, uh, the labor, labor weekend. We have a, a huge dinner, which will be served outside, and then, in conjunction with the Wilcox Fall Festival, which is another thing I started with a friend about. 15 years ago and everyone laughed at us you know 10 years ago photos called it one of the top 10 wine festivals in america mm -hmm. and when is it and that's mid-october and in, it's in the spring and the autumn so in mid-october we'll have a dinner on the friday night the th i think it's the 13th and on the saturday night i think it's the 14th in conjunction with the wilcox full wine the 13th festival. and the 14th oh, of october like yeah, yeah, yeah okay are we going maybe i'm going <laughs> Chad, are you going will you be sounds there? like a blast oh yeah. you bet oh absolutely <laughs> these are my events you know are you cooking um, uh, yep, um, um, yes, I'll be, uh, I'll be cooking. Okay. Yeah. So for that dinner uh, that's happening up north, do people need to RSVP? Do they get tickets? How do they, how much is how it? Do they go to that? There's no <laughs> dinner scheduled up north yet. There's a dinner down at the Vineyard on Labor Weekend oh, okay. and another one in October. Okay. We will start planning dinners once we've done our soft opening and got the machine running properly. Okay. And gotcha. I'm working with this group of chefs called Wild Arizona Cuisine, Brett Viber, mm -hmm. who used to own, is it